ABC. Welcome to My Hometown, the program that explores clubs, organizations, businesses, and issues across Nassau and Suffolk counties and sheds light on the different towns that are making a difference. And a great day to you and welcome to another edition of My Hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, radio personality, Rita Monte, along with NCC student, Zach Turtkel. And today we have the pleasure, the honor, to have here today at uh, my hometown, Roma Marks. How are you, Roma? Good afternoon. And Roma, good morning, good afternoon. Roma is a soprano, an opera singer, and a poet. She plays the guitar, the ukulele, and the piano. And today we will discuss Roma's career and her life experiences. Okay, we're going to go with the first question. We have a lot of questions for you because in uh, Roma's 93-year experiences, we only have uh, half-hour show. It's unfortunate. Zach. We need an hour. <laughs> no, I, think, I think we need about four hours. Definitely. So Roma is just going to have to come back and do part two. That's all I can say. So, Roma. The first question for you, how old were you when you started singing, and can you describe some of your performances as a child? Well, I think I started singing in the womb. (laughs) That's a good one. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, my mother was training uh, for the opera, and uh, it seems to me I do remember that beautiful voice of my mother's coming through. From the and when I was born, they, my parents uh, saw to it that my singing ability would be exposed on the stage. So I went to the Eastern Parkway Theater, which had an orchestra pit, and my mother prepared a beautiful costume for me, and uh, I went on the stage Im- imitating Running Water, Beautiful Lady, and then I sang. When you're all alone any old night, and when you're feeling out of tune. How old were you, Roma? At two this and point? a half. Two and a half. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my God. Go ahead. It's yeah. crazy. It, it, was, it was unbelievable. And when I finished the song, everybody applauded, and I went up to the orchestra leader and said, More music, Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, apparently they had to get the hook. Mm. <laughs> uh. So, Robert, you told me a story that, uh, uh, of course, in those days there was no television yet. It wasn't no. popular. So your mother made you a beautiful outfit, and yeah. you really thought you were on television, right? Well, I uh, made my first uh, audio broadcast debut when I was about two, three. And... <clears throat> It was out on the boardwalk in Coney Island, and it was a store with a glass uh, opening onto the people on the boardwalk. And they had to put me on a cane back chair uh, in order for me to reach the mic, because in those days, the microphone hung from the ceiling. Yeah. And they expected adults and tall people to be able to sing through it. Exactly. And uh, <laughs> so my mother, I insisted upon having a beautiful little rosebud dress and they put me on that chair and I recited some poems my mother made up for me. Mm. I'm a very small person as you can see. I'm not very old. I'm only three. My main ambition is to act on the stage. With my figure, I'd be quite the rage. And that was the poem. (laughs) There was more to it. But uh, I do remember that as a very cherished memory. That's great. That's really good. So, Roma, I want to ask you something because you grew up at the time when, again, there was television it wasn't really invented yet, but radio was at its prime oh, in the yes. late in the late twenties and Absolutely. early thirties. Yeah. So, and also phonograph records were just becoming um, right. electric right. electrical. Did you ever have a recording on um, a shellac seventy eight RPM record? My darling, my father was an audiophile, and thank God he recorded everything, most of the symphonies that I sang with, and most of my recitals are on tape. Wow. And uh, recently they were uh, cooked in an oven so that the 
the tape would stay firm to the to the backing and uh i think a little later on we'll hear uh, one of the tapes that i made mm. yes um he he had uh, i think he was one of the first people to have a, a record cutter and and he even recorded my mother singing and uh, thank God for my dad. Yeah, lucky. That's, lucky for us. That's great. And I have a second question, Roma. Yeah. So what? who were your first coaches, and how did they train you for a singing career? Well, my mother uh, was had a beautiful singing voice, and she was really my, my coach. But uh, the first formal uh, operatic s- singing teacher was uh, Maestro Louis Simeon's at, at 200 Fifth Avenue, and uh, I used to practice making an entrance onto Fifth Avenue because <laughs> when you're a singer, you must know the lyrics and sing according to the feeling of the music. Otherwise, you might just as well sing ah or, or just hum. A song is not a song unless you perform the lyrics and it... it and uh, that's what the, the people are doing now. There are some people who just sing the notes, and you can't understand the song. But most people enjoy understanding the full import of the lyrics of the song, yes. So your mother was your first coach, really. She had a beautiful voice. My, and she sang. my, my mother sang to me when I was in the womb. And, yeah. And, and uh, when I attended uh, school... Uh, at PS99, now known as the Isaac Asimov School. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I lived right across on the other side of the street, just a few doors down from the school. And uh, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> does, he, does he have so much to say? I'm 93. Yeah. You, uh, right. I almost beg you to forgive me. And almost 94. Before. And almost wow. 94, yes. That yeah. memory, though, I can't remember what I had for breakfast this ah, morning. <laughs> well, I remember because I knew yeah. I was coming here to make this recording, and I said, you've got to be careful <laughs> you don't get sick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. But, Rama, tell us, um, Zach, were you done with your question? Yeah, that I'm one? finished. Okay. I, I answered um, yeah. We would like to know about your teenage years as a performer. How did, did that progress? Oh, well... I was searched for having the graduating class at PS99 had a musical called Tom, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, and they had to search from the graduating class all the way down to me, who was in fifth fifth grade, uh, to find a voice powerful enough to carry in the auditorium, because there'd be a lot of people there. And uh, Mrs. Lefrac, who was my music teacher, said, Roma, you have a powerful voice. Why don't you go home to mom and have her teach you the lyrics and the music of of a few few of the songs and come back and and see if if you will be able to take the lead, which I did do and which did happen. And uh, I was up on the stage when with the first rehearsal and a young man uh, an older man he was graduating <laughs> he was 17 <laughs> <laughs> came up to me on the stage and took my hand and said hello <laughs> <laughs> well that started a romance that lasted for about four years oh wow, oh, wow. because he graduated and went to James Madison and I could have gone to Erasmus, by the way, but I chose James Madison because I had a crush on Lenny Ryder (laughs) all that time. That is great. Uh, Unfortunately, when I went to James Madison and got up enough courage to ask him to come to a house party, uh, we went to the house party and... In those days, we used to have dancing, you know, put on the record and, and dance and then have a little soda pop. I don't think we drank at, at too much. I, I don't think. It was just a social thing. Yes. And he was shorter than me. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my gosh. On stage, he looked taller, right? Well, <laughs> he, he probably yeah. was, was taller, yes. you know. 
Yes. Oh, my. <laughs> okay, let's go okay. on. So, Roma, this is a question that was going into my mind even before the show started, uh-huh. and I want to ask you this. So you were one of the only few people that I've met that was born before the Great Depression. What was life like for you during the Great Depression as you were a singer? Well, I remember my mother had to go to the local uh, deli and uh, return a milk bottle, uh, empty milk bottle, and get two cents to buy a package of yeast in order to make bread. Mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't realize exactly how wonderful my mom was because, and my father too, because my father was an inventor and uh, uh, the, the family business, George B. Marx, had, had uh, suffered, uh, uh, had suffered uh, failure because, because of a, a brother that, a family matter. Yeah, okay. a family mm-hmm. matter. Yes. And uh, but I didn't feel uh, deprived. I had and you my. You kept on singing. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, yes. I I had my ukulele, <laughs> and uh, I would walk along the streets of East 10th Street and play the ukulele and sing out to the to the world. And people used to say, "Hey, that's pretty good, kid." <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That is great. And here's the uh, second question, Roma. How and when did you realize that you wanted to be an opera singer and a soprano? When I heard Lucrezio Bori's recording of Un Bel di Verdremo, on the other side was Mi Chiamano, Mimi. And uh, my neighbor, who lived in those days, those uh, Archie Bonka homes were attached, but ours was a, a single residence, and then we were attached to the Archie Bonka home by about eight feet. And uh, my neighbor played, played it over and over again, and I said to myself, Gee, I think I think I might be able to sing that. So, my dad made a recording of me singing over Lucrezia Bori, which wow. he really wow. didn't like, because <laughs> I because I met her and uh, she said, as we say in the musical world, you do have a voice, but that imitation is no good. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and I had news for, right now I have news for Lucrezia in heaven. Honey, imitation is the only way anyone will ever become a singer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's very true. true. That's true. So, Rama, did you ever break any glasses in your singing career? <laughs> no, but I think I I almost that's blew true. the radio station, your radio station <laughs> yes, off the air. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? Let me hope yeah! not. <laughs> I, I'm known for my you. She's yeah. known for that's how she calls her children to dinner, right? Is yeah, that, my, my mother used to call me. No. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, that, so that was a good practice. Yeah, yeah. that was an excellent. I practice. hope I didn't blow you off the air. Yeah. Do we, are we still on the air? Yes, I think we are. Thank on God. The, mm-hmm. Jim's, Jim's giving us a hand signal. We're still on the air. Oh, yep. All good. right, good. Thank God, <laughs> we're still on the air. So, um, you know what we're going to do, Zach? We're yeah. going to take a very short break. From my hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College, WHPC 90.3. Our guest today is Roma Marx, soprano, as you could hear it, artist <laughs> and poet. So stay with us for the second half of my hometown and more with Roma Marx. But- Hi, I'm Danica Patrick and proud aunt. Watching my nieces grow, play, and learn is amazing. But not every child gets to be carefree. One in six kids in the U.S. are hungry. One in six. That little girl sitting alone at the playground, she can't play like the other kids. She doesn't have the energy because she's hungry. School lunch will be her only meal today. It breaks my heart that this is the reality in our country, but it's something that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste. This food is then provided to families and children in need. Being a kid should be about using your imagination, learning, and having fun. These children shouldn't have to miss out on simply being a kid because they're hungry. To find out how you can help end childhood hunger in your community, visit feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. My hometown is made possible by Anton Media Group. 
For more of your local community,